everybody, it's Emily, and I am coming at you with a new book recap. We are going to be doing A Court of Wings and Ruin today by Sarah J. Moss. This is the third book in the A Court of Thorns and Roses series, and it's been a hard, it's been a hard year. It's already a hard year. So I decided to do something a little bit different instead of you guys looking at my face. Uh, I thought maybe you guys could watch me play with my Procreate and learn how to use it. Let's get started. We flash back to when Reese fought in the war with the humans, and it does seem like war is going to be coming for them again. Then we flash to Feyre at the spring court with Tamlin. If you remember, that is where we basically left her. <laughs> I cannot draw a circle, you guys. It's a struggle. Anyways, Feyre is at the spring court with Tamlin, but this time, instead of being the damsel in distress, she is running this show behind the scenes. Feyre works to make Tamlin jealous and Ianthi skeptical by stealing her thunder at the Summer Solstice Festival. She does this by making the sun shine on her instead of the priestess. Uh, jealousy much. She gets Tamlin's troops to warm up to her and become critical of Tamlin at the same time. All of a sudden, Jurian shows up. You remember that human warrior guy who used to be an eyeball? He arrives in the spring court with the Hybern twin brats, I call them. Branog and Dagden. So basically, Tamlin has sided with Hybern like the prick that he is. Jurian claims his goal is to get his girlfriend, Miriam, to come back from her secret love island with Draken, who, by the way, apparently has an amazing aerial army. They view a hole in the wall that they think they could use to infiltrate the human lands. Then Feyre runs across three children of the Blessed. You remember, that's that group of humans that worship the Fae. She tells them to flee, but unfortunately the next day she finds their bodies ripped apart. This is a present from the twins. When Feyre discovers they are going to use the cauldron to collapse the wall, she decides it's time to head home to the Night Court. But hopefully her little seeds of doubt bring the Spring Court down. Although it doesn't appear like she finished the job, but uh, whatever. I guess she just assumes the Alliance will crumble after she leaves. Before she goes, she basically tells Alice, her maid, to get to her nephews because it's about to get cray. On her way out, she sees Ianthi abusing Lucian, her now BFF apparently, <coughs> in a sexual way. Feyre crushes her hands as a reminder that she will not do that to anyone else ever again. Lucian escapes with Feyre so he can see his mate Elaine again, but the twins show up revealing that they've been poisoning Feyre and her powers won't work. But does that keep her from kicking their butts? <laughs> no, it does not. We have more encounters with Lucian's jerk brothers, Eris mainly. We know now that Lucian's dad is not who we think it is. Let's just say it that way. Cassian and Azriel then show up to beat up Eris and fly them home to Valeris. That right. Reese and Feyre are reunited in uh, all the ways possible. Nesta is pretty angry, and Elaine is a shell of herself. She is missing her human fiancé, because as you remember, they turned fey. But Lucian will just keep patiently waiting on her. It's pretty cute. Since Nesta stole some powers from the cauldron, they think she might be able to train with Omrin to patch the holes in the wall? Training montage ensues as Feyre learns to clunkily fly and Nesta hones her mind skills. We then go to the Bone Carver for help in the war, but his price is the Ouroboros mirror, which Moore's jerk of a dad hat. If you recall, Kier, Moore's papa, runs the Court of Nightmares in Reese's stead while he runs Valeris, the city of starlight. He agrees to help them, uh, Kier that is, as long as he and his can come visit Reese's beautifully kept sanctuary. Reese agrees and Moore is pretty ticked at him. Plus, even worse, Eris is there to help things for some reason. Him and Moore have a complicated history here. They were betrothed until she, let's say, spent the night with Cassian. But there are always two sides to the story and he claims he lost a bunch, including some of his brothers, to keep her safe. We find the mirror, but unfortunately you might lose your mind by looking into it, so Feyre decides to scrap that idea. We don't really need the bone carver that much anyways. 
In the library, Feyre is attacked by some hibern cronies, and she runs into that deep dark pit that Cassian is so terrified of. Supposedly it holds something unspeakable. But really it's just a chill monster named Briaxis that is lonely. He agrees to kill the cronies if Feyre will bring him some company. Oh, poor baby. We learn Elaine is a seer, and she sees that one of the mortal queens was sold to an evil high lord, and Lucian volunteers to go on an expedition to save her in order for more help, I guess? We're really just rallying help in these chapters. All of a sudden, Hybern attacks the Summer Court, and the Inner Circle runs to their aid, but sees nobody else has come to help, and they are being slaughtered. Reese faces the King of Hybern, but it is only an illusion. After the battle is over, Feyre meets with Tarkin, who is still a little upset she stole his book, and by a little, I mean a lot. They call a meeting of the High Lords, which is <laughs> kind of like a bunch of old ladies bickering at each other. It's pretty ridiculous. Tamlin is in rare form, insulting Feyre over and over, using intimate details that should not be shared in public. So basically it went poorly, and Feyre unleashed some of her power in anger. We discover Helion, High Lord of the Day, is Lucian's real dad, who then spends the night with Moore. Uh, ew. Not even sure why she did this, because she reveals in this book why she won't get with Asriel. It's because she's bisexual and more interested in women than men. All of a sudden, Nesta freaks out and says they need to run home. As a big wave passes through the land, and Nesta knows this means the wall has collapsed. The inner circle runs to Grayson, Elaine's human fiancé. He is kind of a fey-hating doomsdayer. He has this big iron-filled castle they believe could help shelter the humans at the edge of the collapsed wall. Then Jurian just randomly pops up saying that he's actually been a spy, trying to take Hybern down from the inside. Which makes sense seeing as how he was tortured by Amarantha who worked under Hybern makes more sense than helping them. The engagement is unfortunately broken off between Grayson and Elaine. We all knew it was coming, but apparently Elaine didn't, who is torn into pieces about it. Maybe these pieces uh, Lucian can pick up and put back together. <laughs> they are so cute. I love them. A battle gets ready to commence at the Summer Court, and Feyre glamours their war camp in order to surprise them, but finds out this is a fake attack from Highburn and not his true army. Feyre goes to her good buddy, the Surreal, to find out some answers, but the Surreal is shot by none other than Ianthe. Will this girl go away? Before he's shot, she finds out that Nesta must nullify the cauldron's power. Feyre leads Ianthe and her cronies into the Weaver's cottage. I mean, we are getting all the oldies back together again. The Weaver obviously makes quick work of them, the Surreal dies. Nesta finds the cauldron, but somehow makes it so Hybern can capture Elaine? Feyre runs into the camp, glamoured as Ianthe, to save her. She gets into a fight, but is saved by Tamlin? Maybe he is on his way to forgiveness. Feyre is desperate and runs to get the Ouroboros mirror, where she doesn't lose her mind. Cool. She takes it to the bone carver, who didn't even want it. He just wanted to know if she was worthy. The bone carver, Briaxis, and the weaver enter the fight, which gave me absolute chills. It is very much reminiscent of Lord of the Rings, which I absolutely love. Still, it's no good until more cavalry arrives. Tamlin's troops, Grayson's troops, and Baron's troops arrive to turn the tide. And even more, Feyre's dad, who let them down for the last several years, arrives with a freaking fleet of ships with a dragon. Most importantly, he named them Nesta, which is so sweet because Nesta thinks that he hates her and whatever. Amran and Feyre run to the cauldron, but what is this? Amran turns against them. She really wants to go home, whatever that means. The King of Hybern has their dad, and Nesta runs to help him, so Cassian tries to help Nesta, but he is injured. They've had some serious sexual tension between them, and they end up having a moment here, which will set us up for a court of silver flames, if uh, everybody makes it through this ordeal. The king kills Nesta's father, and she takes it really hard, especially seeing as how he was finally acting fatherly. Nesta and Cassian decide to die together, until Elaine finally shows up to do something. She stabs the king, and it's a family affair because Nesta finishes the job with a vengeance, and that is that. Omrin then unleashes her true form on the rest of the army to end the battle, but she will never be the same. 
Varian from the Summer Court is super upset because him and Amran go together now, apparently. The cauldron is busted, but it's connected to the whole world, so their whole world will be destroyed with it. The cauldron has to be restored, and Reese sacrifices himself to do it. Not my sweet little baby Reese. But of course, all the High Lords finally come together to resurrect him in the same way they did Feyre in Book 1. And also, he saves Amrin and returns her to herself during the process. Lucian finally arrives with the Lost Queen, Vasa, who doesn't do much because she has to return to her evil lord, and they all meet with Draken and Miriam to hide the cauldron on their secret island of love. Time to come up with a new treaty, but that will have to be for another time. The gang all heads home to their beautiful city of Valeris to begin rebuilding their lands. Seems to me like everybody made it through, so there will be more romance, feistiness, all kinds of craziness in A Court of Silver Flames. I do hope you guys enjoyed this recap. Let me know what you think about the procreate aspect of it. If you have any tips, give me tips. I don't really know what I'm doing, but it's really fun to use it. And I quite enjoy learning different things with it. Maybe I will become an artist someday. I hope you guys all have a wonderful day and I will see you guys next time. Oh, if there are any other book recommendations that you guys want me to do, uh, drop them in the comments below. I am right now just reading through the stuff that I enjoy, which I mean, I pretty much enjoy all kinds of reading, but like I said, just let me know if you have any ideas. All right. Love you guys. Bye.